So hello, um, hello students. How are you? Um, I hope you are doing fine. Um, I hope you are um, busy with your um, assignments, your um, activities uh, that is due in um, in the following days, and I hope you are still uh, coping with. Um, our new mode of education. So, as we um, go with our topic for the semifinal, so we will be discussing today the principles of organization. So, what are those um, principles of organization? So, as we all know from our previous um, discussions, that police organization is uh you have the uh so an an organization has its superior and the rank and file or you have the boss and the subordinate so that composes an organization so the police organization is one of the most important government agency any state has a civilian armed unit that enforces the law and exact obedience among the citizenry with due consideration of ensuring the safety of all members of the community. So once you are in the rank and file or you are the subordinate, so you should follow your superior or the next um, in command. So that works for the uh, principles of police organization now let's go with um with our um discussion but before that um so at the end of our discussion you would be able to know what are the principles of organization um how is it um how is it uh, helpful if you are already part of the organization or in a certain unit of the Philippine National Police or any tribe bureaus and you would um, appreciate those rank and file or the lower ranks in um, this topic. So let's start. First, we have the chain of command. So what is chain of Command. So, chain of command refers to the line or chain of supervisors from top to bottom. So, from the word chain, chain means walay bugto or a chain is a sequence or a continuous flow of um, work. Uh, chain of command it is also a set of officers who takes responsibility and accountability to all actions undertaken by the police officers. Of course, that applies in the organization. Who, whoever the superior or whoever is the um, higher rank from you um, should have the accountability and responsibility all the actions that was being undertaken by his subordinates next it is also the system which purpose is to ensure that orders directives and other information are channeled downward and upward through an organizational structure in a timely and uniform fashion so as what i have um, said from our previous discussions that chain of command has its uh, superior or the top of the chain so so in a police um, organization we have the chief pnp so that is uh, the superior of all the police officer so in order for the information to be channeled downward or upward properly so it will be disseminated according to the organizational chain so say for example the chief pnp so 
he will relay the information to his deputies, to the regional directors, to the provincial directors, and down to the um, chief of police of in any uh, municipality or in the city, then down to the barangay level if the barangay has a police auxiliary force. Okay? Next, uniform patrol and line officers are the main face of any police department. So, officers rank lowest in the chain of command. Their authority is limited to enforcing the law when called upon to do so. So, officers make no decisions regarding department policy nor do they supervise anyone because this is the job description of your chief of police in your municipality or in your locality. Next, let's go with the advantages and disadvantages of chain of command. So, there are many um, advantages when it comes to uh, applying chain of command. So, first, um, advantage includes or entails increase in efficiency. So, your workers or your subordinates is efficient. Because they know that they are only reporting to one superior or to one um, superior or their boss. So, if you are only reporting to one boss, diba it, if you are reporting to multiple superiors, that, that accumulates or that uh, makes the subordinates confused. So, he will be confused to whom he will be reporting his task assigned. So, in order for uh, the subordinate or the person or the individual to be efficient in his work, so, he should be only reporting to one superior according to the chain of command. So, say for example, a police, uh, say for example, a worker is in the production of in the production of the company so the head of the production will be his superior okay next clear direction so clear direction means the information or the task from the ceo down to the superior levels and down to his uh, rank and file so, the, the direction is very clear. So, again, so it will not lead to confusion. Next is stability. So, works would be able to be um, stable. Next, accountability. So, as what I've said a while ago, the superior next or the superior when where the unit you are assigned or the department you are assigned should have the accountability and re responsibility. So, the next would be structured responsibility and outside understanding. So, if a chain of command has its advantages, it also includes disadvantages. So, first disadvantage would be less collaboration. Less collaboration because you are in the chain of command. So, if you are only, if that unit is only assigned for a certain task and the, another unit is also assigned to perform another job, so, if, if that um, unit or that superior is only in charge for a certain unit, so, that again entails less collaboration to the to the um, effectiveness or to the result of your job because you are divided because you are all already assigned to a different superior. Next, slow communications. Example for slow communications. Um, for example, if you have, if you are being um, experiencing uh, stressed or you are oppressed in your 
unit so you cannot directly report to the CEO but again uh, it um, it should be um, channeled according to the chain of command so whoever is the next superior or the next in command before you will reach the CEO so they should also be informed so that is one of the disadvantages the slow communication next is decreased employee empowerment and more competition so that the blue the blue one uh, entails for the advantages and the green for disadvantages so that are the advantages and disadvantages of chain of command next let's go with unity of command so what is unity of command so unity of command each individual unit and or situation should be under the control of only one direct unit supervisor so confusion is created when more than one supervisor undertakes independent command of an operation performed by several subordinates or when a, or when a subordinate received orders from one or more superior so this um, unity of command is very controversial uh, we can take uh, the example of the sap 44 or the um, the sap um, the fallen 44 of the sap why because uh, the unity of command so there is no clear direction of orders so those under the those head of the sub 44 is uh, not following to the head of uh, the SAF or it was directly um, or the orders was directly to the chief PNP so the command there is not uh, unified which uh, resulted to the fallen, fallen uh, the which resulted to the uh, the fallen of 44 so they died without the, again uh, the unity of command so this unity of command is very important whenever you have a, an operation so you should only be following the order of your superior not to the superior of another unit or not to the superior next to your superior okay because that was already disseminated from the different um, ranks next let's go with the span of control so what is span of control so span of control an officer should not have more subordinates than he can effectively supervise manage or control Next, in a police service, the span of control is the pyramidal arrangement or grouping of subordinate units or personnel and the ability of one man to direct, coordinate, and control um, immediate. So, immediate subordinates increase. So, this span of control... Um, it can be explained or it uh, entails that a superior should have a um, should have a subordinates wherein he can effectively supervise or manage so anong mangyayari kung kung marami kang subordinates so you cannot effectively manage them or supervise them whenever you have given their task or whenever you have an operation so as a superior or as a leader or as a an officer in charge you should only manage um, people or subordinates that you can effectively communicate with so that is the span of control so the number of subordinates controlled by one superior but in the um when whenever you are in the local police unit so 
of course, the re- provincial director, if ever your locality or a certain police unit lacks the lacks the um the subordinates of one superior so it should be filled up okay because it is the desired subordinates that that local chief of police can be effectively communicate with with his uh, with their task or their job at hand so that is the span of control next is the delegation of authority so what is uh, the delegation of authority this is related to the process committing an activity to another's care next the division of task of command a command among the offices of the various unit so this um entails the delegation of authority because an organization cannot function effectively without assigning different tasks to um to the departments um included in his command okay so in order for them or in order for the task to be effectively or to be efficiently performed well so you should also delegate authority uh, diba, um, just like what happened to the recent onslaught of ty- typhoon Ulysses diba, the hashtag na saan ang pangulo trended in twitter wherein um, they asked for the presence of the president or the commander in chief but then again the the um, they the team of the president uh, already uh, already delegated the task before the onslaught of the typhoon so in or, again in order for for that organization or for that um, department or to perform efficiently and effectively so you should delegate your task okay so the divisions of in delegation of authority. So first we have policy formulation. Involve what are to be done in the form of orders or broad state of action. So policy formulation. So what are to be done? So what will be the situation or what is the situation at hand? So it can be in the form of orders. So I want for example uh, the the president will or all will will order that tomorrow uh, the the residents of Tugigaraw City should um, be given food packs by the DSWD all of them so that uh, uh, that is an example of policy formulation in a form of orders next is direction deals with the procedures what is to be done who is to do it, when, where, and how it is to be done. So, say for example, the president will delegate the coast guards for rescue and relief operation. Okay, so you have to delegate the job uh, to your subordinates. Next, supervision. So, you should also supervise. Uh, deals with the assistance and guidance given to subordinates to ensure successful performance you should update also to the person or to the unit you have delegated the task with uh, hindi magiging effective yan pag wala kang na receive na updates what already happened um, is my is my instruction um, given properly or was it performed properly so ano nang update nakakain na ba lahat na rescue na ba lahat wala na bang tao sa bubong so, and etc so you should also supervise the task you have delegated next is the execution deals with the performance of tasks to be done with commensurate authority to fulfill the 
responsibility. So, whenever you have already executed the delegated authority, so, that person delegating the authority should have um, com- commensurate to fulfill his responsibility whenever the outcome will be. So, okay? So, that is involved, oh, that, or that um, will be for the delegation of authority. Next, how to um, delegate authority. So, paano daw mag um, delegate ng authority? So, first, you have to assign task. Choose the employee or employees to whom the task will be assigned to align the scope of the job with an employee or team of employees with the experience to complete it. So, say for example, during the typhoon or after the typhoon, the president uh, instructed or delegated the authority for the distribution of food packs, for the distribution of masks, or any or any relief operations to the SWD. So, the SWD, because their task is uh, is uh, in line with social welfare, so, they should also perform, or the president will delegate tasks wherein they are already doing it. Um, aligned to the scope of the job uh, delegated with. Okay? So, assign task wherein that um, department or unit is already aligned or the scope of their job is already aligned to the task you are delegating with. Next, set clear expectations. So, sl- set clear expectations. Clarifying expectations at the beginning provides the guidance they need to start the job right away and complete it correctly correctly and efficiently so set clear expectations so say for example you have assigned the, D- the dpwh for the clearing operation so set clear expectation i want two days from now or from tomorrow 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 the roads will be cleared for the relief packs to be distributed easily so you should also um, set clear expecta- expectations so that the subordinates you have delegated the, the task with will perform it effectively and efficiently. Uh, dili sila magiging idol ba? Because, because they know that you have expected a lot from them that they will perform their job um, uh, correctly. Next is monitor progress regularly. So, because you have delegated the job, of course, you have to monitor progress regularly. Periodically request updates from your employees to monitor the progress of each delegated task. And last is practice accountability. Evaluate the quality of the work to ensure that your team members complete it correctly by giving feedback, whether negative or positive, to help them improve their work and develop their skills. So, what? So whatever the feedback will it be, it's whether negative or positive. So you should, so you will always um, return feedback because that will be the basis that whenever something is delegated to them, they should perform it uh, with high remarks. So, giving feedbacks is also important. Next, what is command responsibility? So, an officer of the police force who is directly or immediately in command shall be answerable under the doctrine of command responsibility for any of the following. So, any of the following, so they are um, responsible to answer any of the violations of his or her subordinates. First, we have 
misfeasance. So, what is mis misfeasance? So, it is the improper performance of some act which might be lawfully done. So, in the police service, this is equivalent to irregularities in the performance of duties. So, so this happens when a public officer um, performs official acts in the manner not in accordance with what the law prescribed. So, you have performed the job wherein the law does not prescribe it. Okay? So, so your act is, so the mere, so say for example, so the mere um, helping a person is lawful, but perform in an unlawful, illegal, or injurious manner. So say for example, um, the help, uh, the help you have rendered um, is uh, lawful, but um, expecting something in return or asking something in return of your help is another issue. Okay? Your, your act of helping is lawful, but um, receiving, say for example, bribery or suhol is another issue. Issue. So, you already committed miss the son. So, the actor has no intention to harm. Hence, it only comes from his act, actor's responsibility or negligence. So, from, so this um, miss the son, you have no intention to... Um, so, you have no intention to harm. Hence, it only comes... From your um, responsibility or negligence to perform such act. Next, we have malfeasance. So, what is malfeasance? It also known as misconduct. It is the performance of some act which ought not to be done. So, happens when a public officer performs in his pu public office an act prohibited by law. So, this is done intentionally disregarding the act done morally or legally wrong. So, in this, um, in this um, command responsibility for malfeasance, you already have the intention to cause someone harm. Diba? Malfeasance. So, when you say misfeasance, so you have no intention to harm such person but um, hence it only comes from your um, irregularity or through your negligence so in this malfeasance you already have the intent to cause harm um, to the individual so you have done it intentionally whether it is morally or legally wrong so nonfeasance means it is the omission of some act which ought not to be done so nonfeasance is the willfully or you refuses to perform such act okay or failure to do something that is legally responsible to do so whenever you are um, legally responsible to do that and yet you refuse to do it so you have violated or you can be um, punishable or you have already violated violated non feasance in the command responsibility so again this only entails to the public or to the officers so any um, public officers law enforcement officers can be charged with this command responsibility. Okay? Next, what would be the exemptions? So, what are the exemptions from the doctrine of command responsibility? So, those are the three doctrines. We have the misfeasance, the malfeasance, and nonfeasance. So, what would be the possible exemptions that you cannot be charged or uh, violated the uh, doctrines of command responsibility so first when the commanding officer was not properly informed of the acts or omission of his 
subordinate. So when the commanding officer or your superior was not perform that the police officer perform or the lower rank or his subordinate perform this and that. So if that commanding officer has no knowledge at all, so he can be exempted for command um, for violating either malfeasance or misfeasance. Okay? Next. When the commander was properly informed and he conducted an immediate investigation of such act or commission. So, if the commander um, knows what you did and he acted promptly or he acted um, immediately and conduct investigation with regards to the omission you have committed. So, he can be exempted with the doctrine of command responsibility. Next, when he acted upon lawful orders from higher authority. So, from lawful orders from the higher authorities. So, he is already not accountable because it is the order of the higher authority is uh, prevailed. Okay? So, in this uh, manner, he is already exempted with the doctrine of command responsibility. Command responsibility meaning the commanding officer, the high rank um, official. Basta uh, uh, yung nagdala ka ng, nagdadala ka ng mga tao ka. You are the commanding officer or you are the superior. So, any negligence on your part, uh, you violated the doctrine of command responsibility so that ends our topic for the principles of police organization i hope you have learned something and see you um, for our next discussion